Welcome to episode 70 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Spike Cohen was right with Pastor Tubb. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today, and then applying that to those around me. In the last episode, all three of the Libertarian candidates for Jacksonville City Council came back and we were joined by Spike Cohen. Two candidates had to leave early and this episode is the remaining conversation between Pastor Tubb, Spike, and me. Let's dive right back in. Um, like, like, well, we, we yes. tend to meet, we tend to meet every couple, every, usually about every three weeks, we meet a little, do, a little Dunkin' Donuts here. We kind of go back and forth about what we're doing. Um, there's other times we do things socially together. And, and I and here's what I found that by being like that, and when we go do these park cleanups and stuff like that, they see us. We're talking, and, and I think that yeah. when they see us like that, it's not so serious. It's I think they almost see us like, hey, these guys are enjoying this because because yes. we like each other, and, and so it doesn't seem like yeah, we're out here cleaning up trash, and we just want to get this over with. I, I think having that the three of us working the way that we are has kind of led into that, that we can openly share things on Facebook, stuff along those lines. Yep. We have no competition in tagging each other and stuff along those lines. So that's yeah, where- Yeah, I think- Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think it is important to, you don't make a game out of it, but you do gamify it. It has to be a fun and accessible thing. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people that run for office, they forget that part, that if it wasn't something they were personally invested in, if they, I ask people, I say, look at your campaign, look at what you're doing, look at your social media, look at your website, look at everything. If you weren't emotionally invested in this thing, if it wasn't, you know, Tub or if it wasn't mm -hmm. Ron or if it wasn't Eric, if it was, you know, Bill Smith running for city council, you don't even know if you support him yet. Would this engage you at all? Would you even care it's, or would you go, oh, okay, so like, right, whatever. Office, and, and then ignore them? And, and you know, you know, it's kind of funny because like I have my website up and, and I have a very diverse family. <laughs> OK, mm -hmm. we kind of cover across the board a little bit. And I remember right. when I was talking to the guy about putting the website up and, and, and I said, well, listen, I said, um, I said, I want to kind of I said, I'm a, I, I like my family still, you know, because they're out of my house now. So I like them. And, and so <laughs> uh, uh, and so so I'm like, I want to put this up there. And the guy who was doing my website goes, are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, almost oh, definitely. It's just because I'm going to reference my family a lot. You're going to see my family around different things. And not to mention, I, I, I want people to understand that I know what's going on in certain communities because they're in my family. And so there's that level of, hey, guys, see who we are, because if you yeah. don't, you only have this amount of time, because I'm learning people's attention spans like that of a goldfish. Nothing. And, yeah. yeah. And, and, if, and if you can't get something, they're on to the next thing. Yeah. And, and, you yeah. know, and so I found that we and this is where I'm learning to do Facebook and stuff again, because I'm wordy. You know, what I'm saying? if you see some of my posts, they're lengthy. And that's why I can't oh, yeah. do Twitter. I can't do Twitter because I, I, I got too much going on. The pastor in me says, keep talking. And so, so I, yes, sir. Well, I was going to say this. I do a lot of long posts mm -hmm. and some of my, my posts that I've had my top three posts uh, on Facebook and my top three tweets on Twitter were actually threads on Twitter. You yeah. can do the long form, but you have to do it in a way. It almost has to be like poetic. And I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you're, you're a pastor, you know, iambic pentameter and all that stuff. You, you have to get them engaged in a story that makes them they can't wait to hear what the it's, end of it is all right let's clear something up um you're assuming i'm a good pastor which i'm not <laughs> so um, those good pastors probably do it that way i'm not that guy but here's what's funny because we were sitting at dunkin donuts and we have our our affiliate here our, our treasurer mr sokol mm -hmm. right and so he's doing he's the treasurer for the other two guys campaigns so sometimes he'll mm -hmm. come and sit in the meetings with us and we're talking about Facebook and what we're doing because he's not on Facebook. And, and so I mentioned to him, I said, See, here's what I'll tend to do because I like the story. And so I, I kind of one day I, I started talking about, hey, growing up, you know, my parents would leave and my three older brothers would be there. And so my oldest brother thought he was the boss of all of us. And, and he would put in these kind of rules that made no sense at all. But what were we going to do because they were in control? And, and so we kind of looked at it and I kind of walked that out a little bit. I'm like, you know, we're just begging for my parents to get home so we can get things back to usual. And I put in there at the end of it, I said, it almost feels like right now in this country, we were waiting for our parents to come back home. And when I mentioned that to him, Joe was quick to go, yes, 
He goes, even though it's lengthier, but he goes, you drew, it's a story. It's about people, right. you, you know, he's like, I can, I can relate to that. And, and so that's my thing is that I, I, you're saying like, cause I'm not on Twitter at all and I have no desire. I didn't even want to be on Facebook. Okay. This campaign kind of said, I have to be. Right. So, yeah. I, I, so I, I cannot, that's great advice for somebody who's going to be on Twitter. Not this guy. So I, I'm not like, I, I'm too, I, I'm just too much trouble. I'm just too much trouble. Honestly, even on Facebook, it's still the same thing to the extent, obviously with Twitter, because it has to be in these little chunks, these mm -hmm. however many, what, 280 yeah. character chunks or yeah. whatever, yeah. you sort of have to get them with a little cliffhanger at the end to get them onto the next yep. thing. Yep. But sa same thing with Facebook to a certain extent. Um, if you want to give them several paragraphs, you have to start with a story and yeah. you have okay. to start with something that engages them and makes them want to know what what, the, what 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 happens exactly i have yep. to finish reading this so i can mm -hmm. find out what happens so right. it, it you know i think we often it's like you start writing something and before you know you've made several paragraphs about philosophy or a specific policy and you're gonna lose people if care. you don't have that story they don't yeah. they right. don't care yeah. and, and that's why they i found care. that you know what build the story and then add in your point about whether it's political or whatever make them draw that connection right. like you draw them in they go okay 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 oh Right. Oh, there it is. See, that's what some good pastors do. Yeah, I, I listen to them and then I learned, hey, there's what they do. Now, here's the thing is, I know you don't have a whole lot of time and, and all of my planning to get inside that melon of yours and just get all the wisdom that you have running around inside of that. So I, I do actually have some things I want to cover real quick. Sure, sure, it's, sure. Go ahead. Okay. All right. First thing is this. Okay. It has nothing to do with campaign. It has nothing to do with anything. I'm going to be your mm -hmm. pastor for a second. Okay. okay. Dude, you got to breathe. You got, you got to breathe and remember you have life and you have a wife and you have things that are going yes. on. And we love yes. the fact that you're everywhere because you're mm -hmm. everywhere all the time. You yes. got to breathe and you got to be able to not, to, not, not me, but you got to tell other people, no, you know, you, you know, not me, not, not me. Maybe not, not, you, not you, not Harrison, but I, but, need, I need more time for you and Harrison. Yes. And the other, <laughs> no, but here's yeah. what I was getting at. The reason I put a thing on there and like, you finally went in like, Oh, dude said something. Uh, like I put on, I, I woke up and I looked and you went and reacted to one of my things at three in the morning. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, that's good, but dude. And I put right on there, dude, get some rest, like breathe a little bit. So I'm going to pastor you for a second and Thank breathe you. and understand okay. that, you know what, we all appreciate what you're doing and we love what's going on, but you know what, if you're not healthy enough to do what you need to do, you're not going to do us any good anyway. Okay. Yes. So I'm pastoring you and I'm sure your wife would probably agree with this to a certain extent of dude, breathe, enjoy life a little bit, yes. and understand that we appreciate what you're doing. Now, that's the pastoring you part. Now, let me see. So look, look, I actually, look, I actually put stuff I see, I see. in my phone. You had a conversation with someone else about me. Mind your business, man. You, listen, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to be all in my life like that. Don't you worry about it. This is my own. I can have my own stuff real quick. I'll, I'll get to it. Okay. So I remember, you don't remember when we talked, but we talked at the conference. When okay. I turned you into an anarchist? I guess you do remember. Crap. All right. So let's be very clear. No, 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 you did not. I made you into a <laughs> constitutionalist. Remember that? that oh, that, okay. That, okay. That, oh, okay. Okay. Now, if okay. you do remember, though, which I was kind of hoping. Yes. I, okay. So that means you kind of remember what happened. I can't pull one over here. All right. So you started <laughs> mentioning the idea, and, and I was like, I can't get on board with this. I can't get on mm -hmm. board with this anarchist type thing, because I think there has to be a level of we got to understand and have some understanding. Now, mm -hmm. let me ask you a question. Following right. that line, even though I'm not on board with you yet, I want to make that abundantly clear, not on board with you yet. How does that effectively get pulled off? Like, you can't pull off a city. Do you pull off a state? Like, how does, does it have to take the country as a whole? Or does it start in a city and stretch out? Like, how, how do you, like, does a state have to secede from the union to pull this off? Like, how does it work? So I think the short answer is it depends on whatever level of freedom that the people who are currently presuming power and authority over us are willing to tolerate. So for example, if we are, if, and, and I also, it also isn't going to happen in, in our current state, which is right. a big part of what I try to tell people is, you know, in anarchist circles, there's something called the Rothbard button. And basically a guy named Murray Rothbard, one of the, the main anarcho-capitalist uh, thinkers of ever. Uh, he, he proposed something called a Rothbard button. And it was more of a thought exercise that if there were a button that you could press that would make government and all of its coercive institutions go away, mm -hmm. would you press it? 
And if you if you aren't, then you can't call yourself a true abolitionist or, or anarchist. The okay. thing is, there is no Rothbard button. There is no snapping your fingers and making it's government done. go away. There is no such thing. And uh, if there, if I could, if I could snap my fingers and make it all go away, 99% of the country is going to turn around and say, what the hell did you just do? Exactly. And immediately go back to making a new government, which would probably be worse than the one it replaced. Mm-hmm. So with that said, the way that we get to freedom, whether it's... It, 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 which doesn't start with anarchy. The way that we get to freedom is first, we ch- we create a culture and work on creating a culture of freedom, of right. people who, who crave freedom and who know that not only is freedom better for them, but it actually creates the stability and the safety and the better health and the lower crime and, the, and, and all the things that we want, the prosperity and everything else that we want that we're told government gives us. When that happens, we can begin the process of ending the, the growth of government and working our way towards freedom. But so you know, how, you know, how that ends up happening is probably going to be a myriad of different ways. It's going to be the dissolution of existing power structures, whether it's states seceding or breakups of the union mm-hmm. or autonomous zones within, you know, peaceful autonomous zones within existing states. There's probably a multitude of ways it's going to happen. I'm not 100% sure how that happens, okay. but I do know that we have to start, we have to culturally be in a mindset, or at least a, a large number of us need to be culturally in a mindset for to even want that before we can ever even get there. And, and there's there's your, I believe that's your biggest challenge is mm-hmm. unprogramming people to think that, no, this is what's best for me. So just tell me what I need to do. No, what's best for you is to, for you to think on your own. And, yeah. and, and this is where I hate you. Like, let's just be honest. Like, I hate you for this. In that um, I had this, you and I have talked many times. I'll come over DL's house. Harrison's. I'll come over Harrison's Harrison. house. I'll come over Harrison's house and, and we'll talk about these things. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know. And then I had this thinking that says, I, I think we need a level of rules. And, and I actually made the argument, which was a stellar argument, I must admit, to you that day when I said, if you mm-hmm. take if you take a football and eight boys and you send them on their way and say, hey, go play, the first thing they're going to do is make rules. Yeah. And, you, and you agreed with me because that's genius. And everybody knows that. And so you were yeah. smart enough to go, Tub, good point. But then you went on to explain that there's a level of anarchists inside of that. It's that the people decided these are the rules for us, not somebody yeah. lording it over saying these right. are the rules for us. Okay. Yeah, so- you act you 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 actually proved that that I was right. Because and and, and here's how because <laughs> football wasn't created by fiat. Football wasn't created by someone pointing a gun at people and saying, if you don't play football this way, you're in trouble. It essentially started with people who said, hey, what if we played a game that blah, 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 blah. Uh And I don't I'm not sure with football. I know with basketball, there was an actual inventor. I don't know with football how it was invented. However, what was inventor, whether it was from an individual or from a group of people, however, gridiron football came to be. It came to be from spontaneous, voluntary Uh, action of people choosing to come together. Yeah. And here's the thing, like, I would fully agree with that, except for the way you started that. You started with how I proved you right, okay? <laughs> that's, that's not, that has nothing to do with this. So what you're saying is step one is you've got to deprogram everybody, okay? And a, gr- a large number of people, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's your biggest, that's, that's going to be the biggest hurdle. That okay. is that is the hurdle. After you p- approach that hurdle, at, in uh-huh. fact, and it's not even like a step one, step two. To the extent you know that you start seeing more and more people demanding to be free, that's when you really start seeing cultural changes working their way downstream to political changes. Which so, is why I think that the Libertarian Party is the most viable way to push that on the electoral end. But a, it's not uh, the electoral end is only one of many. Uh, many different uh, uh, avenues that we are taking to be Uh freer. And also at some point, what's going to happen is as the Libertarian Party grows, Republicans, Democrats, Green Party, Constitution, whoever else, will start adopting our platforms if for no other reason than to try to to. sap some of our votes. That will be the true case of victory when everyone is pushing forward towards a freer society if for no other reason than political relevance. So isn't it possible then that these current mandates can work to our benefit as libertarians because we have something very clear, very open to contrast with. This is what's happening. Here's where we are. So couldn't we as libertarians, if we were smart enough to come together and see an opportunity instead of infighting and started saying, hey, wait a minute, guys, look, this is a horrible idea that could be great for Mm -hmm. us. 
because yes. we have a solution that's contrasting that. And, and what I'm looking at this, I'm going, libertarians, let's get our act together. Because yep. in all reality, this could be used, to, instead of us bickering, here's what we tend to do. We complain, we complain, but I think mm -hmm. that we have to come to a point where we come to some solutions. I always tell everybody, don't come to me with a complaint, come to me with a solution. Come to me, If yep. you have a gripe, bring me a solution at the same time. And right mm -hmm. now, I think we're all like, yeah, these things suck. Yes, they do suck. What are we going to do about it? And just saying we yep. hate them doesn't fix it. That doesn't fix it. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. So this is what I've been trying to tell people. In fact, I, I said this at the Florida convention, you know, the, the following day when oh, I spoke there? at them, my little dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. I spoke, yeah, I spoke before you. You weren't there yet. I spoke before. Oh, God. Oh, but see, I had the premiere spot of nothing at all. The next but day, I said to people, you know, who here was here when uh, when Tub gave his his, uh, his his bit of a fire and brimstone speech about what, what we need to do? And people uh -huh. clapped. And I said, who here was ready to receive that. And the clapping was a little quiet. Oh and I said, I said, okay. I said, but here's the thing. Everything he said was 100% correct. And I talked about the fact that when, but ultimately what you said, no, no, don't again, change it. Don't change just it. You, proves me no, right. So, when, so, so what happened? Hold on. Is, I, said it, I said it first. You had that to refer day. back to what, nah, 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 nah. you had to refer back to what Tub said. I want to make that very yes. clear. You continue, continue. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So what you said, <laughs> proving me right, no, was you that so the, you were so close, you almost had it. <laughs> no, no. But here, here was the point that you were making, and it's something I've been saying for quite some time as well. Is that the 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 one of the reasons that we do so much bickering and infighting is because we do this really weird thing where we get together and we fantasize about a free society, mm -hmm. and then because no one's really building a blueprint to get there, we then yell at each other as to why we haven't gotten there yet. And it's, it's very much a, you know, idle hands make the devil's play thing. Mm -hmm. When people are right. just sitting there commiserating constantly and complaining, but not building a solution, the next inevitable step is that we start nesting and we start attacking each other. And right. that's the phase that we're in. One of the things that I'm working on, and, and I have some more uh, that I'm going to be announcing in the, in the next few weeks that we're not gonna, now, you're yeah, not going to announce, you, it, you're not gonna announce it on this show. Well, it's right funny now. that you told me that it's funny. You told me to rest because we're about to like take this thing to a completely different level. Um, not by correct. the way, I sleep. I sleep very well on the airplane, so don't worry about it. Um, but when I, uh, when, <laughs> when, I don't worry about it. Just what just we're doing yeah, is, we appreciate it. What we are doing is, <laughs> what we're doing is when you demonstrate to people how you can actually make a call to action, like what I did in Russell, Kentucky, what we're going to be doing yes, in right. places all over the country right. uh -huh. is to show that this is how you fix something. You identify it, you say what's wrong with it. That's we're good. We're good at that. We're good. You at that. say what the solution is. Uh -huh. We're often good at talking about the solution, but then we go and do the thing. Right. And then we go and show people how it's to fix action it. Time. It's action right. time. Yeah. Yep. That it's fixes like, that problem or at least ameliorates it. It brings people into the movement. It kills the narrative that we aren't winning anything. And it shows that right. we're actually the people that are that are building a, right. a, a culture I, and, a, and a structure to fix all this. Yeah, I think I, I, to interject here, I think part of the challenge is to do a couple of things. And I think this is where libertarians need to kind of work on things. One, they need to yeah. kind of find their voice, right? So yes. we were talking about like Twitter and, you know, the, and one of the things that I've been noticing is that uh, I, I kind of keep a, just a mental tab on what things that I say or what media that I put out and how the response is. There are some things I'll put out and like 10 minutes later, there's like 12 likes. Other times, 10 hours later, there's like two. And yep. it seems like the one that's 10 hours later, oh, and there's in, only two. In your world, I'm sorry, in your world, 12 <laughs> likes is like when you have 6,000. Okay, I, I, want you know how so, us, okay, I want you to know how us little social media people work, so, all right? <laughs> all right? So, so what, what I've, and one of the things that I've noticed is that um, sometimes the stuff that I think is, uh, to quote people on the internet, it's a banger, right? I'm like, man, this is going to go hot. And then it falls yep. like <laughs> flat, right? And then yep, the other yep, things yep. that I just kind of casually put out, I'm just like, Maybe I'm a little bit more passionate about it. Maybe I'm just like, no, whatever the case may be, I'll put it out and I don't think twice about it. And then bam, it goes crazy. It and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. what the hell? And so I've been realizing, um, because one of my things is communication and I really harp on a lot of, and some of the libertarians really get mad at me about this online because I'll give them a hard time about how they communicate. And I think that there are two things that you can communicate in the way that you think um, is going to be received. And then you can communicate in the way that is actually being well received. And I yep. think the two are not the same. And a lot of times 
we kind of conflate them and we tend to look at it. And we think the way that I like it, it's almost like the love languages, right? It's the way that I like it must be the way that you, you like, like it. it. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. what I'm learning is that um, sometimes I need to adapt my voice, not my message, you yep. know, so I want to be clear because because when I first came in, I was criticizing and I kind of wrongly criticized libertarians a little bit in a sense that I was I was saying like, hey, um, I, I kind of presented it more like it's your message, but it wasn't really the message. It was the delivery that I was mm -hmm. trying the to tone criticize. and the tenor. Yeah, right. Because I have found that you can say some pretty amazingly crazy things if you deliver it in a in in a slightly less jarring manner. It's called Bernie Sanders, right? And, it's Bernie Sanders. Uh, right, like he right. says crazy things, but people go right. Or Man, that's or, great. Or or the other thing, and this this goes into, and you're you're not privy to it. I'm sure Spike is. Oh, so, oh, so now I'm completely <laughs> out. Oh my! Listen, it was one thing, Spike, when you, you were treating me this. like a little guy. No, you don't know this. Just no, no, you're no, you're no, petty no, little. No, you don't no, even no, know no, this. No, 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 no. This is don't, something you don't no, know anything about. You are about. not on Twitter. He's like, don't even nod your no, head during this. Don't no, pretend like you're just, following. It's not even a. This is not for you. Little brain, sit back in the corner because because you're not on Twitter because Twitter is a nightmare. Right. You guys are such condescending yes. jerks. And I hate you so guys. So Twitter, Twitter's a nightmare, and there is a lot of fighting. There's a lot of, a lot of bickering and all this going on, uh, um, back and forth. And, and I'm trying to remember exactly where I was going with this stupid conversation. Yeah, now. little brain the threw thing, you off your game. Yes. The thing so, that the thing that Tub doesn't know anything about. Right. Yes. So, so what, wait what a minute, that still doesn't narrow it down for him. He's still like, wait a minute, wait. Which topic was that? <laughs> So there, there's sure well, no, I'm, I'm no, I'm just saying like, you're not privy to it because you're not on Twitter. Right. And so yes, you're not yes. seeing a lot of it. And there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of fighting on there. Yep. And yep. I think that um, one of the things that people don't stop long enough to do is just say, how is my message being received? Like, I, and, yep. and um, oh, I remember where I was going with this. So there have been some spicy things that have been said by some affiliates mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. went berserk and they were just like, oh my God, I can't. They're like, I can't believe they said that. And I thought about it one day, and it was more like the New Hampshire tweets where they were like, you know, child labor should be legal or something like that. And at first I was like, you know, should they have really said that? And then I thought, you know what? I bet I can work with that. And I'm like, let me see if I can craft a message that kind of veers the conversation back to something I can work with mm -hmm. rather right. than over there. And so I put out my own message and I got some good responses. And then I remember I went to a city, uh, local city council meeting. Am I involved in this? Do I understand what you're you were not saying? there, but not you'll yet. know what about. Okay, my little mind not keep yet. up with right, this. Right. Not yet. Sorry, so I went to a, right, I went might, to a city yeah. council meeting. Uh, no, it wasn't a city council. It was a town hall. I went to a town hall because they were talking about raising, uh, adding a gas tax. Right? They were going to add. They were going to extend the current six cent gas tax an additional ten years and add another six cent gas tax for thirty years, so they could. Oh, good. Um, so that they could fund some of uh, this pile of infrastructure projects that they want to do. So I got up there and I'm the chair of the party. So I want to, I, I get up there and I announce myself as the chair of the local party. And then, but I wanted to say taxation is theft, but I wanted to not sound like a lunatic. And I was like, man, how am I going to do this? And I was like, all right. So I challenged myself. So I got up there and I said, you know, if you know anything about liberty, I, I announced who I was. You know, I'm BL Cummings. I'm chair of the Libertarian Party. Blah, blah. I thought you were Harrison. Right, I'm Harrison on the side. <laughs> Harrison uh, that's, Harrison my, that's, that's my uh, that, that's my side hustle. <laughs> so I I announced myself, and then I tell them, I said, if you know anything about libertarians, you know that we oppose taxes, all of them. And then I said, we even have a slogan: taxation is not theft. Or, I'm sorry, taxation is theft. theft. Oh Lord. Um, but I said, I said we have this slogan. I said. But I don't want to, I didn't come here to talk to you about slogans. And I said, I actually, I actually want to ask you a very real question. And then I went into my real question, right? Yep, and yep, here's yep. the funny part. I was, I was walking out and nobody, I thought it was a great question. So I'm pretty proud of myself. And at first nobody's like, dude, that was a great question. You know? So I was kind of like, damn. I do that every Sunday. I understand. Before I got out. <laughs> every Sunday. Before I got out of the church, because it was, it was held in the church. Before I got out of the church. Two women approached me and they said, excuse me, did you, who, who'd you say you were? And I was like, oh, I'm deal companies. And they're like, and you're with what organization? I told them. And then they were like, so what were you saying about taxes? And I told them again. And they said, that's interesting. And I, and, and I said, they said, well, how does that, you know, what about, how does that work or whatever? And they were asking some more questions. So then mm -hmm. I just, then I went into it. I said, here's how it works. And there's two of them, one of me. I said, 
the three of us uh, are voting on taxes. And I said, two of us say, yeah, let's vote and increase taxes. One of you votes no. And I said, always, unless there's 100% unanimity, 100% uh, 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 support, I said, there's always going to be someone or several someones that are being forced to lose some of their money. Two wolves and a sheep. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And I said, <clears throat> so it's always going to be theft for you. Even yeah. though we may have, uh, us too may have agreed to it, it's theft for you because you did not. So it was amazing because, I, I, one, it lifted my spirits, of course. And then two, I was successful. Like, this is how I... And, and I started realizing, like, it's it's really more about how we communicate. I mean, yeah, you can do a spicy take, and, and that might work, but you need to be prepared to to bring somebody in. It's kind of like you throw up the neon sign when they show up to the door, then you got to make the sale. You got to have and the I, pivot. Yeah, right. You know, and like, I, I don't. I feel like that's what we're missing in the community. I feel like there's too many libertarians that can only deal with the message in the way that they think not the way that someone else thinks. We talk to each other. So right. my little mind, um, it's the idea of know your audience. Yes, that's, like all, you that's have, another like one. You have to know your audience and that, because here's the reality of it. We understand that as libertarians, we are not going to accomplish anything off of just libertarians. Right. You know, like yep. if we're running for office or whatever it happens to be, we're not going to accomplish it. We have to understand that we have to steal from the other two sides in order to do anything. Yep. Right. So what do you, let me ask you this. Oh, let me, oh, crap, I hate having to defer to you like you know something. Um, <laughs> how, how did you effectively walk that line? Because you, you have to keep your base. You have to keep your base no matter what, even though they're just libertarians and there's so few of us in a sense. But you on right. such a big scale, you had to do this. I have to, you're going to have to pull Democrats. You're going to have to pull Republicans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I believe there's a know your audience has to factor yep. into that. But what did you find inside of it? Because now what you did on a huge scale, I'm doing in my little mind world mm -hmm. that I'm at. You didn't have to agree with that. You didn't have to agree with that where at you're, all. Where you're, yeah. what you understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> when I said little mind, you did, that's like the, that's like somebody in the church going, amen. Yeah, you're dang right, you're a little mind. Yeah. So, but how did you on that scale effectively know, okay, I got to pull this one, I got to pull right. this one. And how'd you pull that off? Yeah, translate so, greatness to, to my little world. guy, to little yeah. people. To what yeah. you can understand. Yeah, no, let Plus, me see if yes. I can do that. So Maybe draw one thing pictures. I- what I learned in, um, that's what I got the blank wall for. That's blank wall for, just like, here's what you shock. do, stupid. So what, <laughs> so what, oh, what no, I, I, I hate that's my question. I think he called me stupid and he laughed at it like it was funny. Don't nobody vote for no, this No, I guy. laughed at you calling yourself stupid, which you is really argued. markedly you like, different than you what you're saying. You could easily said, Tub, don't talk about yourself like that. No, Tub, that's, you you're, not, treasure you're not stupid. You are. You're very <laughs> smart. <laughs> Too late. Positive of it. Too late. So now go ahead. Um, so one thing I learned in business for over 20 years ago is that it's great for me to say what I think is great about my company or my service or my political advocacy or whatever. Mm -hmm. None of that matters. What matters is, and I mean, both of you have talked about this, mo what, what, it, it, thereby proving me right, that what Because that's really the point of all of this. I was that, quite right. That's like the that's, title of this, that's right? Is Spike is, is right. You need the title this. You, you know what? Spike is right, I, featuring Spike Harrison, right. Tub, Ron, and Eric. So I may, I may um, title it that. The Spike is right show, <laughs> featuring no. So this is just so, getting worse. Now I now listen. I've already <laughs> said I don't understand this podcast thing. Now I'm fully aware why. This, this, this is, is what why. podcasting this, is. This is this, this is, is what podcasting is horrible. So, Go ahead. So it doesn't matter what I what I think or what you were or, or you think. It's what the people that we're trying to reach, what they think. Right. And so it has to be oriented on solutions, on the things that they care about, but it also has to be in their language. So something I've had a lot of people that will say, you know, what is it about your social media that's different? Because something feels different. And I say, I am one of the most radical slash principled libertarians you'll ever meet, but I don't talk like I am. There are right. people who think that I'm just like just, some normie exactly. centrist. Because yep. I present things and then I say, well, common sense would say that we shouldn't do this. And, mm -hmm. you know, here's a way that we can fix that. Here's a call to action right. to fix that. I don't dive into, I might occasionally you get close. mention libertarian philosophy, get but I don't get into that stuff because it's important to. So like, I'm, I'm trying to think of like a, a recent thing that was a big, uh, uh, Marvin Guy. 
There's a guy huh? in yeah, uh, Killeen, yeah. Texas. He 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 shot uh, at officers that came yep. into his home mm-hmm. uh, on a no-knock warrant. He had no idea they were cops, and he ended up killing one of them. And usually, when that happens in Texas, the person is acquitted. Uh, or, or charges are dropped or never filed. He has spent seven years in prison without trial because they have nothing. And so they're just punishing him by sitting, sitting him in jail without trial. Anyway, so I make a post about this. Yep. I don't immediately go into the libertarian praxis about, you know, about uh, philosophy, about criminal justice. I talk about the facts of the case. Mm-hmm. And then I right. explain how no knock raids and the war on drugs and police unaccountability and criminal uh, uh, prosecutorial misconduct and all of these things have led to this happening. And then I give people a call to action, contact the DA and tell them to drop the charges, go to Mm -hmm. freemarvinguy.com and make your donation, share this post so that more people can find out about it. So I give people, I gave them the problem, Right. How we got here, the solution and how you can help. And it was a wild hit. I never I don't even think I once said the word libertarian. Mm-hmm. I don't think I ever once mentioned the non-aggression principle. Nope. But all of that was dripping in the actual post. I just didn't use in in inside baseball the wording. Jargon, right. And so that's an so, important thing for us to do is talk to the right. normies. So you so, asked about alienating my base. You do right. not alienate your base by putting our principles out in a way that connects with people. As long as you stay true to the principles, they will stay there. I will get the random person who will say, why do you talk so much about how vaccine mandates don't work? That doesn't matter. It should just matter that they shouldn't be able to tell us to do that. And I go, yes, except it doesn't to them. Right. No, that no. matters to us. But right. if those right. people are told this is a violation of your natural rights and they go, well, does it work? And I go, I don't know. And they go, um, okay, well, if they say it works, then I'm cool with it. We have to talk to them. Right. So here, here's the thing then. So two things. One is there are times where, you know, you put your stuff out there and I almost want to comment like, hey, your anarchist is showing a little bit. Like, I kind of want to mention that sometimes. I Like, I want to throw that in there. But here's the thing. Do you ever, like you personally, um, in your travels about, um, do you ever have people kind of accuse you of not walking that hard enough libertarian line because you like you said on, on you twitter don't twitter okay <laughs> yeah, all right Ran, and, and and less and less so but when i first started doing it i would have like hardcore libertarians going what's the problem man why are you talking about this this is, you didn't even mention our rights and stuff and I, and over time more and more people have gotten right. that i'm saying things like end the entire war on drugs not just cannabis this all right. of it uh-huh. in right. a way that connects with like 65 year old optimist club members who go to church every Sunday and who think drugs are terrible. And I, but they then see how the war on drugs is making everything they hate even worse. I, and that it's effective and that you can bring people in. I get some of my big, biggest followers have thin blue line profile uh, pictures because they don't see me as saying I hate the police or that right. or 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 no or you know I think the police should be abolished. They see me as saying we should hold bad cops accountable so good cops can do their work. We should end the war on drugs right. so good cops aren't being exposed yeah, to gang violence that's completely unnecessary. It connects with them instead right. of with people that already support everything I'm I'm saying anyway so like a few weeks back they had a thing here in town that two council members were bragging about how they're going to shut down the strip club over across the way and yeah. so i got on there and people if they know me that it's the pastor it's on my page and yeah, yeah. I, kind of, I put on there i said listen i do not condone what they're doing there i'm not going to the strip club but i believe in their right to continue i believe they have a right to exist and i kind of mapped that out and yeah. i never had to go into the craziness of libertarians believe this you yep. know what I'm saying? But I just kind of mapped it out. And then you should see how many people started. Whoa, wait a minute. And, and so yep. the Christians started kind of questioning me. So I've had to, I've explained that away between libertarianism and Christianity. And, but if you look on my follows, because with all that free time that you have, just kind of look down my follows, you know, and you'll yes. look at some people who don't look like they would match up to Tub the Pastor. Right. And a lot of them stemmed from just saying you have a right to exist, even if I don't agree with it. And right. I right. and I didn't have to walk that hard line of horrible Democrats, horrible Republicans, libertarians are the only way to go. Now, yeah. let me ask you this. Libertarians are we are who we are. We could mm. be the third largest party, but people don't understand that. OK. Yeah. And so like um, every now and then I'll start carrying my little palm cards with me. And I was walking into a restaurant the other night and this guy was walking out and I just go, hey, here you go. And he looks at it and he goes, what's this? He goes, Republican or Democrat? I said, I'm libertarian. He goes, what's that mean? 
And, and so I'm like, listen, I said, in all honesty, because I'm looking at who I'm talking to, I said, we kind of fall in the middle of both of y'all. Like we kind of fall in the middle of Republicans and Democrats. We take some from both sides and we can kind of go, this is where we sit a little bit. And then he just asked me, hey, how do you feel about Biden? I said, well, I hate him. He goes, well, then we're okay then. And, and so I, I have found that there's a level of my time right now that's having to explain the party. Yes. Okay, so how do you find your balance inside? Because you, you have to, especially on a national level, you have to find a way to effectively say, this is who we are. We're not all the lunatics that we kind of come across as, which on a side note, Libertarian Party's put out a great commercial today. You saw the commercial mm -hmm. that they were doing? Yep, yep, yep. That's genius. That's beautiful. Because I looked at that, I go, that's main, I hate to say it, that's a mainstream style commercial. Something yep. that you can go, we're not a bunch of lunatics, but here's where we are. It was put together well. I'm like, those are things that we can get behind. Unfortunately, there's not enough of those out there. So many times, the loudest of the libertarians are the craziest ones. And so, okay. like, you know, we can mention names, which we won't, because we want people to keep watching your thing. And, and so, but inside of that, how did you start finding that balance of, I have to explain libertarian, but I also want to let them know about what they're dealing with. So I, on my social media, I don't bother explaining libertarianism. I talk about talk subject. About, hold you're on, saying, I'm sorry. In person. Forget about oh, social in person? media. In person. Oh, that's yeah. easy. That's okay. easy. So in person, someone says to me, what's a libertarian? And I say, I think that we do best when we're most free. And I think that the problems we're facing are because of the people that are in office who are using the power to enrich themselves and the cronies they have. And the reason that the cronies that put them in office and the reason that they're able to do that is because they have too much power. We've taken too much power and given it to too few people. And we need to dismantle that and put the power back in your hands. That's my 15, 10, whatever second elevator pitch. Um, okay. And I, so I don't use the, the we're somewhere in the middle. And the reason I don't do that is because if you're in the mindset of a voter and they think, okay, I fall somewhere between here and here. And then they hear that there's someone here that might actually agree with more with what they think, but our likelihood of winning is very low. Then it kind of feeds itself to saying, I guess I got to figure out which side I'm closer to because these people don't have as much of a chance. What I say instead is I like to disabuse people very easily and quickly of the notion that there's a difference between Republicans and Democrats. Right. Because okay. at the end of the day, uh, what I like to do is I say, you know, if they'll say, are you a, a Republican or Democrat? I'll say, I'm sick of both of them. It doesn't matter who's in office. They just keep messing things up. You and know, this one says they're going to do this and they don't. This side says they're going to do that and they don't. You know, we believe this. And so what I try to do is draw a contrast. I, I make it a new binary choice us and them, them. the, the, the mm -hmm. Republicrats and us, um, as opposed to trying to say that we're, because A, we're not centrist. And I get the point you're trying to make that we have, that they basically cribbed good ideas from yes. us. But I try to make it clear that these are not polls and we're in the middle. The polls are the authoritarians. And I don't necessarily right. use that word, but the polls are them who have used the this current. to rob you blind yep. and, and pay themselves off and subjugate you and make your life harder for their own benefit. And us who want to dismantle all that, put the power and the money back in your hands. And, and, and that's and, sort of the way that I phrase it. And that's where I've tried to be very cautious, like online and stuff like that. I, I try to make it very clear. I don't like either one of them. Like, I, right. I don't say, hey, this Republican's bad or this Democrat's bad. Whenever I get into it, I'm like, they all kind of suck. And, and yeah. so like, I, like, so I get what you're saying. Now, I, I, I try to tell everybody because I have people who do follow up questions. Like, what do you mean? What, what do you mean you have? And I'll be like, well, listen, there's certain things we're, we're fine with homosexuals, you know, which then separates us from the Republicans and the Democrats kind of glom onto it. Like, oh, because yeah, don't yeah, ask yeah. me straight out. And so you got to kind of find this area. It's the know your audience thing. Like, okay, what part, if I'm talking to a Democrat, well, you know what? I don't, I'm not going to stress the ways that we're different than Democrats. I'm going to stress the way that we're different from Republicans because right, right. that's what they have to, and, and I'm just well, it's, So, so yeah. you want it, you don't, the way that you're different from Democrats is Democrats have failed them. You are yes. going to rarely find someone who is a Democrat voter who's happy with the Democrat Party. Especially Same right thing now. with Republicans voter, yep. especially right now. Yep. Uh, and, and, and Republican voters have routinely been against the Republican Party. It's what made Trump so popular. And now they're increasingly dis, uh, disenfranchised and disenchanted with Trump. Right. So mm -hmm. what you do, and so like I'll have a Republican say, you know, I'm a Republican, convince me to vote Libertarian. And I'll say, are the Democrats ruining everything in this country? Are are they just completely, you know, destroying this in order to be able to take over everything? And they can say, yeah. And I say, yeah. had the Republicans done a damn bit of good to better. stop them? That's, yeah. yeah. That's where I've been. So, oh, no. So, oh. Okay. Well, it sounds like they're on the same side then. So yep. that, that's the kind of and, stuff and, I'll use. Unfortunately, right. I got a couple more minutes and then I'm yes. going to have to go, but no, no, I'm, we know I'm happy to answer if you got another question. Yeah. What if I do? 
Listen. No, if you do, I'm happy to. I'm happy to answer. You better get on it. Then, listen, I got six minutes. I'm using my. I'm using my time. All right. L- let me real quick then. There's always a question I want to ask you, but I can't ask you here because I don't. It, it can't, it, it's not a question that we want to do publicly. So okay. we'll figure out how we do that. All right. Okay. Um, more important. No, because it's kind of legit. It's legit in my world. All uh, right. Pineapples. But. No, no. Okay, never mind. Okay, all right. So, oh, is that a little brain thing again? A little no, brain no, like me no, won't no, understand that, this. All yeah, right, no, someone, no. someone somewhere will understand it, and never mind. Not it's me. It's something that you you wouldn't understand. <sighs> I'll tell you. After oh, show. yeah. It's like, hey, stupid, you won't get this one. <sighs> Real quick, this is gonna be teenage girl stuff. Okay, teenage girl okay. stuff. Don't, don't look at me like that. You're fully aware of this. This yeah. is the question that's okay for public consumption? Yeah, is- if you heard the other one, yes, this one's pretty good. Well, uh, let me explain. Why don't you let I can me edit. ask? Let me ask the yeah. question before you make those faces. Get, right? get the editing ready. <laughs> Listen, okay. You can't edit this. This is you're gonna block me completely out. There'll, there'll be just some blur next to him the whole time. Let yes. me ask you this. Okay, so I, I, I'm effectively trying to engage people and people who put things onto Facebook because I don't do Twitter because mm-hmm. I'm too stupid. And so um Here's what I want to ask you. This is the teenage girl question, okay? Okay. If you could tell me three solid people to follow whatever on Facebook, okay? Not you. Obviously, not you. Okay? okay? I said solid. So you if said we had, solid, right? I said solid. So who would you? Who are three people that you would say, hey, he, and let me tell you what I'm looking for. I, I like engagement. I like other people to kind of chime in. I like conversation. Uh, maybe I don't even have to agree with them, okay? But I also don't want somebody who posts something once every two weeks. Like, I, I want the, to, who would you suggest? So someone I always recommend if someone's just looking to follow someone that's got good content and good conversation would probably be Larry Sharp. Larry Sharp, um, okay. He's great. And in fact, I'm actually, I'm going to be interviewing him in a few minutes. So he was already on nice my plug. mind, but he's, nice he's definitely someone. All right. Who who be sure else? to make, be sure to use me as your plug for him. Say, listen, I just had this guy and I'm just gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell you right now. Larry, I told you, tell this is who you want to follow. I'm just I just got you one follower. Not yet you haven't. Well, I, no, I'm saying I got Larry one follower. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't done it yet. Let's see who your other two are. No, so <laughs> who are some other people? You should listen, I, you, you know, should I, Yeah, so I I thought I, this is your easy one. I yeah, asked you is... about how do we get to the point of anarchists and you're like, you rattle all that stuff out. I ask you, hey, who are three people I can follow? You're like, dude, I, I don't even know. Okay, like, so here, okay, so uh, uh, Larry Sharp, uh-huh. Hannah Cox is a Hannah, good oh, one. Yeah, I yeah. see her and on there, then, and, okay. Yeah, Hannah Cox is a really good one. And are you saying specifically like person p- personalities pages yeah. or like a, um, like, who, I was let me ask you another. Who, all right, let me ask you this one there too, for my third one obscure just somebody that you kind of hey they're, they're, i like the stuff besides me besides me you know what I'm saying the obscure. obscure person has pretty solid stuff besides i can't follow me so if there was somebody else besides you know harrison here like if there was somebody besides who, like who's a little if you don't have to don't tell me now if you don't want to but if you start putting some thought behind it you go got it hit me up i feel like as soon as i'm going to go off, log off i'm going to be like oh this is a person i would have said an obscure person. A little more obscure. Something that, because what you gave me there are two people who already everybody knows about. Everybody has things going on. Uh, I yeah. want somebody who's a little more, like I have a couple of people on my page are a little more obscure. They're a little more like people don't necessarily know them, but like, you know what? I like what they do and, you, you know, I can kind of help out a little bit and do what I do and do what you do. So whoever you um, think of that third one is, you let me know. I'm thinking, I, so the first thing that came up, and I'm not sure if this qualifies as obscure, but um, uh, the Cajun, what, uh, two, actually two, the Eskimo Libertarian and the Cajun Libertarian. Those aren't they're, I'm not sure I'd call them. They're not obscure what's that? at all. They're not, they're not random yeah, see, I don't, I'm They're trying very to well. Even if I've already heard of them, they're big because I'm an idiot, remember? And, and the idiot in me has already heard of them. And I go, okay. So do whatever you yeah, gotta do. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with a, a Matt Kibbe's not obscure. Who? I don't know. Hold I, on, say I, that I, again, because clearly. <laughs> Matt Kibbe, K-I-B-B-E. He's definitely yeah. a good person, but he's not obscure. He's one of the people that brought me to libertarianism. Oh, so I'm not going to um, like that guy. Never mind. We don't We don't want to get involved no, with the guy no, who dragged you into us. No, he's, nope. He's terrible. Okay. But is he on there enough? Like, is he? Yes. He no, is. he is. He's active. He's active on there. Um, All right, but you're saying he's I'm not obscure. I'm just going through my... 
Yeah, all of them are pretty active. Jeffrey Tucker is another one. But Jeffrey again, Tucker. these aren't obscure people. Maybe um, not in your world, but I'm a simple guy. Okay, well then, then he's obscure in your world. So th those are some. Oh, Gloria Alvarez. Now yeah. you'll have to translate her stuff because it's almost always in Spanish. But Gloria For Alvarez real? is a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. These are the people I'm coming up with. All right. And who was the other one? Tucker? What's Jeffrey Tucker? Tuck, uh, Jeffrey Tucker. Jeffrey Tucker. All right. Look. All right. Fair enough. All right. You got other real life things to do. Yes. I hope that I was able to help you both, Harrison tub yes um thank you thank you dl thank you for having me on i really appreciate it i okay. wish i could stay on longer but unfortunately I, we, we're going to start recording in just a second but i really appreciate you guys uh i do hope to help you more in the future as your as your race heats up love to come down it's if they, if nothing it's an excuse to come to jacksonville which i love you don't want to you don't uh, want you don't want to drag your wife here remember I Listen, know because she won't leave. That's exactly. the problem. She That's wants to move to Jacksonville. So if you I want to move to Miami, she wants to move to Jacksonville. No, oh, I know. You, I know. Now, real quick, if you remember, you agreed that if one of us win, you're moving to Jacksonville. And then yeah. you try put yeah, you try putting caveats in there. Like, no, I mean that no, you said if one of us win. No, if in. one of you wins, I'll move to Jacksonville. I will do that. Awesome. Settle awesome. in. Listen, start looking for houses, dude. Start I, looking for houses. Okay. When you look for houses in Jacksonville, hit me up. My wife's his wife. <laughs> what nice. I plug. will do it. I will hit you up. I nice will hit you up. Plug. Thank you guys. Spike, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. This episode, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head on over to Facebook.com forward slash Free Speech Media Network, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 10 p.m. While you're there, be sure to check out other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Find me over at LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.